200, but with strict adherence to all applicable guidelines and protocols issued by the Ministry of Health. The lives of our children and their health is not a matter for debate. Learning institutions, therefore, should only be reopened when we have and can sufficiently guarantee the safety of all our children. And here, I really would plead with Kenyans that us not focus ourselves on when schools will reopen, but how shall these schools open in a manner that protects our children and protects their lives and their health. Kumbuka basi mtazamaji ni kuanzia kesho usije ukapatikana nje leo usiku ukasema kwamba KBC ya Uboni Musambi alisema Wagonjwa wanaotafuta matibabu katika hospitali ya kitaifa ya Kenyatta sasa watalazimika kutafuta huduma hizo kwingineko baada ya wafanyikazi kwenye hospitali hiyo kutekeleza ilani yao ya kugoma wafanyikazi hao wanalalamikia hatua ya tume ya kuyanisha mishahara SRC ya kutoidhinisha usimamizi wa hospitali hiyo kuchunguza upya mishahara yao miaka minane baada ya shirika hilo la serikali kuondolewa kwenye kiwango cha 3C na kupewa hadhi ya 7A sasa wanatoa wito kwa rais Uhuru Kenyatta aingilie kati Leo asubuhi wagonjwa waliofika kutibiwa katika hospitali ya kitaifa ya Kenyatta walitatizika baada ya wafanyikazi kugoma kwa mkia leo daktari anambia ni kuje by 7 kufika nimepata wametoka nikikutana nao anambia leo tufanye kazi wenzetu wakituona tukifanya kazi wanaweza leta shida kati kati yao sasa wakaniambia wake up nje hadi sisi tutamaliza kuungana na serikali tulifika hapa Kenya hata around 7:30 and since that time tumekuwa hapa hakuna mnyana tuatendia the doctors wako huko na wagonjwa wako ward so we can't see them or to party any gate pass so tumekuwa tu hapa kuanzia 7 and they're not doing anything wakiongozi na viongozi kutoka vyama mbalimbali vya wafanyikazi wafanyikazi hao walidumisha kwamba huduma katika hospitali hiyo hazitarejelewa hadi tume inayoshughulikia mishahara SRC takapoidhinisha usimamizi hospitali ya Kenyatta kutekeleza marekebisho yanayohitajika tulipoe pesa leo ama tukae kufanya ka pili SRC iko na uhuru ya kuja kufanya ka kazi walitofautiana na tume ya SRC kwa kujikokota kuhusiana na swala hilo licha ya bunge kuidhinisha mapendekezo ya bajeti ili yatekelezwe na wizara ya fedha Tunaambia SRC sisi hatutarudi nyuma mpaka tuone barua to address to the CEO of Kenya National Hospital saying we advise you to do what yeah. we advise you to do what yeah. so if SRC is the obstacle then they are solely responsible for what is happening no one else SRC na tumechoka na huu mchezo wa paka na panya na SRC Wafanyikazi hao sasa wanatoa wito kwa kiongozi wa taifa Angelie Kati. Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya. Yeah. Honorable Mwikai Uhuru Kinyata. Yeah. We beseech you as the workers of Kinyata National Hospital to look into our plight and use your executive powers to alleviate this problem. Hospitali ya kitaifa ya Kenyata ambayo ni shirika la serikali iliondolewa kutoka kiwango cha tatu chanya na kurodheshwa kuwa 7A mwaka 2012 na kisha hatua ya kuyainisha mishahara ya wafanyikazi ikaanza hata hivyo miaka minani baadaye tume ya uyanishaji mishahara imedumisha kwamba wafanyikazi watafanyiwa utathmini wa kazi kabla ya mishahara ya marupurupu yao kuchunguzwa upya mbunge wa sirisi ya John Waluke ameachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni kumi. Waluki ambaye amekuwa korokoroni kwa kipindi cha miezi mitatu aliachiliwa huru na jaji John Oyengo aliyeamua kwamba hakuna sababu ya kumnyima dhamana. Mbunge huyo alipatikana na hatia ya kuilagai halmashauri ya kitaifa ya nafaka na mazao shilingi milioni tatu pamoja na mshtakiwa mwenza Grace Wahungu. Wakati huo huo mbunge wa Nakuru Mashariki David Gekaria amekamatwa kwa madai ya kuongoza maandamano mjini Nakuru. 
Waluke sasa amepata afueni ingawa bado wajaponea kabisa. Mbunge huyo aliyekata rufaa dhidi ya hukumu ina mkabili alipata afueni ya muda leo baada ya jaji John Oyengo kuachilia kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni kumi pesa taslim. Jaji Oyengo aliamua kwamba hakuna sababu za kutosha za kumnyima mbunge huyo dhamana. Alipewa dhamana hiyo huku akisubiri kuamuliwa kwa rufaa iliyowasilishwa katika mahakama kuu. Waluke amekuwa gerezani kwa kipindi cha miezi mitatu iliyopita baada ya mahakama ya kushughulikia kesi za ufisadi kumpata na hatia kuila hai bodi ya kitaifa ya nafaka ya mazao NCPB shilingi milioni tatu pamoja na mshtakiwa mwenza Grace Wahungu na alihukumiwa kifungo cha miaka 67 gerezani au faini ya shilingi milioni saba. Wahungu pia aliachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni ishirini pesa taslim Wakati huo huo raia kumi wa kigini wanaoaminika kuwa raia wa Ethiopia wamerejeshwa kwao na kushtakiwa katika mahakama ya Maralal. Wakijitetea wageni hao walidai kwamba walikuwa wakitoroka hali ngumu katika nchi yao wakitumia kupata ajira na maisha bora jijini Nairobi. Na hatimaye mbunge wa Nakuru Mashariki David Kikaria amekamatwa na kuzuiliwa katika kituo cha polisi cha Centro mjini Nakuru. Yadaiwa mbunge huyo aliongoza maandamano mjini Nakuru na kutatiza hodma za kawaida Timothy Kipnusu Darubini ya Channel 1 Naona maoni mengi sana mtazamaji katika mtandao kuhusiana na kufunguliwa kwa ba na vile ambavyo Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ametangaza na wengi wanaonekana kufurahia lakini wanasema kwamba hiyo kafiu <laughs> ingepungua zaidi yanze saa sita hayo ni maoni ya official Trevitoza hapa katika Twitter vile vile nimemwona Benson Kitoo Mutemi anasema yuko pamoja na Veronica Mutemi wanasema kwamba wanafurahia uh, Rais Uhuru Kenyatta kusema kwamba shule zitafunguliwa tu endapo uh, serikali itakuwa na uwezo wa kuwapa wanafunzi usalama dhidi ya COVID-19. Asante Benson uh, Mutemi kwa maoni yako hapo. Namona pia Daktari Henry Ochoki anasema kutoka Itibo City sisi tunafurahia uamuzi wa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta pamoja na wale ambao wanasimamia vita dhidi ya COVID-19. Esther Kioko pamoja na Alphonse Kioko kutoka Makueni nanyi mnasema kwamba mumefurahia sana vile ambavyo Rais amefungua lakini je wana muziki wapige muziki kwenye ba au la ni jambo ambalo mngependa kufahamishwa zaidi. Maoni yanazidi kumiwinika katika Twitter. Unaweza kutuma yako at @kbc channel 1 na at @boni musambi. Narejea hivi punde. When the world changed, it made us go back to the simple joys and love the little things even more. Like serving up your best, eating together and sharing more. Now, oh, we'll take nothing for granted and always remember to taste the simple joys. Coca-Cola. Taste the simple joys. Tonight on KBC Channel 1. Oh, son. Mother. Oh, oh. oh my darling. Mom. Are you okay? Yes, mom. Did they hurt you? A little bit, but I'm okay. Don't you worry, huh? I thought I was never going to see you no, again. No, mom. Why does it hurt so much to hear that Irwin was found? Francisco does not deserve any of this. My love. In love with Ramon. Karibu tena hii ni darubini ya Channel 1. Baadhi ya wazazi sasa wanasema kwamba wana mzigo mkubwa kutokana na mahitaji ya ufunguzi wa shule. Wazazi hao sasa wanasema kwamba wamelazimika kuhamisha watoto wao kutoka shule moja hadi nyingine huku taasisi za elimu zikiendelea kufanya juhudi za mwisho mwisho za kutimiza kanuni kuhusu ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Wazazi hao walielezea wasiwasi wao kuhusu walimu wa shule za umma wakirejea kazini leo. Kastemel ni miongoni mwa taasisi 124 ambazo zimelazimika kufungwa kutokana na makali ya ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Kulingana na Mama Maya kufungwa kwa shule ya Kastemel kunamaanisha kwamba atalazimika kutafuta shule mpya ili kumpeleka bintie wamuzi ambao wanasema 
utamsababisha kugaramika hata zaidi. Uh, the other high deck is just thinking about uniforms, uh, multiple pairs of uniforms, new books, thinking about how she will socialize with a new friend. It's just something that we've not been able to put our head around it, but I know change is inevitable. We will just have to go through this. Baadhi ya shule za kibinafsi kama vile Ruaraka Academy zimeponea makali hayo ya kiuchumi kupitia matumizi ya teknolojia. So Sean you are late. So let me repeat again in, because of Sean. John Kagake anasema shule hiyo imejiandaa vilivyo kutimiza kanuni kuhusu ugonjwa wa COVID-19 zilizotolewa na Wizara ya Elimu. Katika shule ya msingi ya Uhuru wafanyikazi walikutana ili kujadiliana kanuni za uslama kabla ya kufunguliwa kwa shule. It's better if we have a reopen a full reopening so that we move as one unit come 2021. Katika shule ya upili ya wasichana ya huruma, walimu walitia gizo la serikali ambapo walifika shuleni sawia na wenzao katika sehemu zingine nchini. Huko Kiambu, walimu katika shule za kibinafsi walitoa wito kwa serikali iwasaidie kuafikia kanuni zilizowekwa kuhusu ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Kuna mahara ambapo unachukua sanitizer, una sanitize mikono na pia ukiingia huko maofisi ndani. Kwa kila ofisi kuna sanitizer. Chama cha walimu cha Kupet kimesema shule nyingi zitatatizika kutimiza kanuni hizo za serikali. Chama cha Kupet kimesema ipo haja kwa wadau kushauriana ili kufanikisha harakati za ufunguzi wa shule hapa nchini. Itachukua jamii juhudi mbalimbali mbali katika kukomesha usambazaji wa virusi vya COVID-19. Wanafunzi huenda wakalazimu kuvaa barakoa, kuosha mikono kila wakati hususan kabla na wanapoingia darasani. Irene Nchuma Odim, Darubin ya Channel 1 katika kaunti ya Nairobi. Kamati ya bunge la taifa kuhusu usalama imewashimu baadhi ya wanasiasa wanaopinga kutekelezwa kwa awamu ya pili ya usajili wa huduma namba kupitia kwa mwenyekiti wa Kepaul Koinange kamati hiyo imesema kuwa wale wanaopinga shughuli hiyo wanahofia uwazi wa vita dhidi ya ufisadi Kamati ya bunge la taifa kuhusu usalama imetetea mpango wa serikali wa kutekeleza shughuli ya usajili wa huduma namba wakiwataja wale wanaoipinga kuwa wanaohujumu agenda ya rais kuhusu maendeleo If you fundamentally disagree with the government policy just ship out. It is very difficult to work within a government that you don't trust and you cannot work with that government. Mwenye kitu kamati hiyo Paul Koinange aliganusha madai ya baadhi ya wanasiasa kwamba shughuli hiyo ni sehemu ya njama kubwa ya kuiba kura kwenye uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022. Let me remind everyone that Huduma Namba is not just a jubilee project. It is a state project which was created by members of parliament through the amendment of registration we want to condemn the inciting utterances made by some members of the so called tanga tanga brigade over the weekend against huduma number by giving distorted information thereby threatening our national security this is an exercise that we will see to completion this is an exercise that we will ensure that all our kenyans are given equal rights in terms of services so that we don't have imbalances caused by people deliberately wakati huo huo kiongozi wa chama cha Waipa Democratic Kalonzo Musyoka amesema kuwa chama hicho hakitachukuliwa tena kwa kikaragosi cha chama au muungano mwingine wowote wa kisiasa akiongea wakati wa ufunguzi rasmi wa ofisi za kwanza za chama hicho katika kaunti ya Mombasa Kalonzo alisema kuwa chama hicho kitayari kwa uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022 na kitawasilisha mgombeaji wake wa urais baada ya kuunga vyama vingine mkono kwa miaka mingi kadhalika amewahimiza wale wanaotafuta nyadhifa kwenye uchaguzi mkuu jao waangazie maendeleo na maslahi ya Kenya safari hii nimesema itarudia hakuna mchezo safari hii we are not playing second fiddle to anybody miaka kumi ya kusaidia ndugu Raila simitosha na hatimaye kamati ya uhusiano ya wanawake wanachama wa vyama vya kisiasa iliyokusanyika jijini Nairobi inamtaka rais achukue hatua kuambatana na ushauri wa jaji mkuu David Maraga na kuvunja bunge kwa kushindwa kutekeleza kanuni kuhusu uwakilishaji wa kijinsia wa thuluthi mbili For us as women we look forward to witnessing a momentous action and gain for our nascent democracy 
viongozi hao walimtetea jaji mkuu akisema kuwa bunge limeshindwa kupitisha mifumo kadhaa iliyowasilishwa kwake na sasa ni wakati wa kufanya maamuzi kabambe Suleiman Yeri Darubenia Channel 1 zaidi ya vijana mia tatu katika chuo cha kurekebishia tabia cha Shikusa Bosto katika kaunti ya Kakamega sasa wataweza kupata mafunzo ya mtandao baada ya wakfu wa Safaricom kutoa msaada wa kompyuta kwa hizi na habari nyingine tazama mkusanyiko wetu wa taarifa za kaunti Wakfu wa Safaricom umetoa msaada wa kompyuta 30 kwa taasisi ya Shikusa Bostol katika kaunti ya Kakamega ili kuwawezesha zaidi ya vijana tatu katika taasisi hiyo kupata masomo ya kidijitali. Kompyuta hizo ambazo zina mtandao wa interneti zinanuiwa kukuza welevi wa vijana hao wanaorekebishwa tabia katika teknolojia ICT na utafiti wanapojiandaa kujumuika tena na jamii. You have an opportunity to study you have an, an opportunity to reform your behavior you have an opportunity to go back and integrate in society this is not a prison this is an institution that empowers you to be better into the future na kijitabu cha kuwasaidia wanahabari kupata maelezo wanayohitaji katika kazi zao kimezinduliwa na baraza la habari la Kenya likishirikiana na tume kuhusu utekelezaji haki. Kijitabu hicho kilizinduliwa jijini Nairobi wakati wa sherehe za kuadhimisha siku ya kimataifa na kitawawezesha wanahabari kupata habari kutoka kwa mashirika tofauti ya serikali. Journalists need to have a guideline or a framework within which they can operate so that when they seek for information Uh, from public institutions they know from um, the manner in which they should uh, get that information and if that information is denied then how to ensure that through the commission the information is released uh, some uh, some institutions and some officers are threatening not to release the information uh, and that we've agreed with the media council that it's something that the commission is going to pick up and ensure that uh, it works Wakati huo huo wakulima wa miwa hukumu mias kupitia chama cha wakuzaji miwa nchini wameanzisha mchakato wa kisheria wa kujumuishwa katika kesi ambayo inahusisha kampuni ya Crossley na kipande kikubwa cha ardhi. Kampuni ya Crossley inataka kulipwa fidia takriban shilingi bilioni 10.5 kuhusiana na uharibifu wa ekari 1011 hatua ambayo wakulima hao wanapinga. These communities should have a say on their land. These communities have not benefited from their land. They gave out their land for a factory to be built and now there is no factory there. Hai, wa Kenya huenda wakalazimika kugaramika zaidi katika kununua maziwa katika miezi ijayo kwa sababu uzalishaji wa maziwa umekuwa kipungua. Katibu katika Wizara ya Ufugaji Henry Harry Kimtai amesema hali hii inasababishwa na bei za chini za maziwa. Chamko la ugonjwa wa miguu na midomo katika baadhi ya sehemu za Rift Valley na ongezeko la hivi majuzi la gharama ya malisho ya mifugo hali ambayo imesababisha baadhi ya wafugaji kutelekeza ufugaji wa ngombe wa maziwa kutokana na gharama ya juu ya uzalishaji huenda ikachangia. Serikali imesema haitamua kuhusu bei za rejareja za maziwa hapa nchini huku uzalishaji wa maziwa ukipungua hapa nchini. Katibu wa Wizara ya Ufugaji Henrik Mutai amesema bei za chini za maziwa na gharama ya juu ya malisho ya mifugo yanawaagizwa kutoka nje kutokana na vikwazo vya usafiri vilivyofuatia kuzuka kwa ugonjwa wa COVID-19 kote duniani na hali ya kuenea kwa ugonjwa wa miguu na midomo katika baadhi ya sehemu za Rift Valley zimewatatiza wafugaji wa ngombe wa maziwa huku wengine wakitelekeza biashara hiyo kutokana na gharama ya juu ya uzalishaji we leave it to the uh, market forces demand and supply to ensure that the prices uh, does not go uh, up we don't want the process i mean the processors to exploit the uh, the consumers as well so we are keeping track of that we want the market forces to play demand and supply without influencing 
mashauriano kuhusu mbinu za kuruhusu wagizaji wa maziwa kutoka Marekani yanaendelea huku serikali ikiahidi kulinda sekta ya maziwa pa nchini dhidi ya ushindani usiostahili kutoka kwa maziwa ya kuagizwa we are now at the negotiations on, on issues of FTA so we are going to get to take the concerns of the farmers and ensure that uh, the farmers uh, are protected as well ili kuhakikisha bidhaa za mifugo za hapa nchini zinatimiza viwango vya kimataifa wadau wamehalalisha miswada kuhusu afya ya mifugo na maslahi ya mifugo ambayo inalenga kuongeza viwango vya usalama wa bidhaa hizo the animal protection and welfare bill is regulating how we care for our animals with the passage of this bill you will not see chicken being hung on the careers of matatus miswada hiyo pia inalenga kuboresha utoaji huduma katika mfumo wa uzalishaji wa bidhaa za mifugo Karibu sasa spotini mtazamaji ambapo mlinda lango Arnold Origi amerejeshwa tena katika kikosi cha Harambee Stars cha wachezaji 31 kilichotajwa leo na kocha Francis Kimanzi kujiandaa kwa mechi ya kirafiki ya kimataifa dhidi ya Zambia. Mechi hiyo ambayo Harambee Stars itatumia kujiandaa kwa mechi ijayo ya kufuzu kwa finali za kombe la bara Afrika Afcon dhidi ya Comoros imeratibiwa kuchezwa bila mashabiki tarehe kumi mwezi ujao katika uwanja wa kimataifa wa Moi Kasarani. Origi ambaye huchezea kilabu cha Hifk Football nchini Ufini hajashiriki katika mechi yoyote ya kimataifa katika muda wa miaka mitano iliyopita. Mlinzi wa Bansley Clark Odwar pia amejumuishwa kikosini. Hata hivyo, mshambulizi Michael Lolunga na hodha Victor Wanyama na kiungo Johana Omolo huenda watakosa kujumuishwa kusini kutokana na kanuni za kukabiliana na kusambaa kwa virusi vya corona zilizowekwa kwenye mataifa ya vilabu vyao mechi hiyo ambayo Harambee Stars itatumia kujiandaa kwa mechi ijayo ya kufuzu finali ya kombe la bara Afrika dhidi ya Comoros imeratibiwa kuchezwa bila mashabiki tarehe kumi mwezi ujao katika uwanja wa kimataifa wa Moi Kasarani baadhi ya wachezaji wengine waliotajwa kikosini ni kiungo Kenneth Muguna Francis Kahata Eric Johana Cliff Nyakeya Ayub Timbe Masud Juma, Timothy Otieno na John Avire. Frederick Mwoki, Darubini, Michezo. Shirikisho la soka humu nchini FKF limehimizwa kuzingatia kutia saini mkataba mpya na kampuni ya ligi kuu ya soka KPL. Tom Alila anayewania wadhifa wa mwakilishi wa baraza la kitaifa la FKF tawi la Nairobi amesema kuwa FKF haina uwezo wa kutosha kusimamia ligi ya soka humu nchini. Hata hivyo Alila ametoa wito kwa bodi ya uchaguzi ya FKF kuchunguza madai ya hongo kwa wapiga kura kwenye uchaguzi wa magatuzi uliokamilika. Kenya Premier League. The issue needs to be checked properly. Kenya Premier League must be left to run the affairs on their own. This issue of federation meddling in the affairs of F Kenya Premier League should work under FKF and their contract need to be extended so that they can run their league on their own so that if there is a problem you can be able to point out that the problem came from this other side so i support strongly fk kenya premier league contract being extended but under fkf <laughs> Haya, mtazamaji najua kwamba watu wengi wanapenda sukari. Sukari ni nzuri sana. Lakini je, unafahamu taifa la kwanza kabisa ulimwenguni 
kuwahi kutumia sukari ambili usiamini taifa la kwanza kabisa kuwahi kutumia sukari iliyosafishwa ikapitishwa kwenye kampuni ni taifa la India ilikuwa ni zaidi ya miaka elfu mbili iliyopita kwa mujibu wa utafiti niliofanya katika Google hilo ndo taifa ambalo linajulikana sana kwa sukari kwa pilipili ndivyo <laughs> hali ilivyo natamani siku moja nifike India nasikia kukisifiwa sana hii sukari na vile vile hii pilipili nasikia kila pilipili unaweza uwashwa ukawashwa mpaka ukashindwa kulala natamani siku moja nifike pale Mwai kwamba umefurahia darubini ya Channel 1. Eh, tukutane tena hapo kesho panapo majaribio yake Mwenyezi Mungu naitwa Boni mtangazaji bara. Anaitwa Lensa Odingo. Kwaheri. Ujambo mtazamaji. Shukran sana kwa kujiunga nami kwenye utabiri wa hali ya hewa. Jina langu ni Tilio Marco. Usiku huu hali ya baridi kali itashuhudiwa hasa katika kaunti ya Narok. Viwango vya joto vitashuka hadi nyuzi moja pekee. Wakati huo huo maeneo mengi ya nchi yatakuwa na hali ya ukavu. Lakini rasharasha za mvua na ngurumo za radi zinatarajiwa katika maeneo ya magharibi, Nyanza na baadhi ya sehemu za Rift Valley. Kuna uwezekano wa mvua pia katika maeneo ya Nairobi na pia katika sehemu za maeneo ya kati. Itakapotimu kesho asubuhi ni kwamba maeneo mengi ya nchi yatakuwa na vipindi vya jua. Lakini rasharasha za mvua zinatarajiwa katika maeneo ya Meru na vile vile katika maeneo ya Nyeri. Itakapotimu majira ya alasiri ni kwamba rasharasha za mvua na ngurumo za radi zinatarajiwa katika maeneo ya Kakamega, Kitale na Kuru, Kericho. Maeneo mengine ya nchi yatakuwa na hali ya vipindi vya jua kama vile maeneo ya Mandera, Garissa, Wajia na Isiolo. Viwango vya joto vitaongezeka hadi nyuzi 38 katika kaunti ya Mandera na kaunti ya Nairobi na kili kati ya nyuzi 26 na nyuzi 15. Hadi hapo mtazamaji sina la ziada ila sasa kukuacha na utabiri wa hali ya hewa kutoka maeneo mengine duniani uwe na usiku mtulivu College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Thika and Meru. Did you know that we are a Tibet approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management and many more register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com you can also call on 0725923550 nairobi branch 0728087689 eldoret branch 0722227428 thicker branch 0725000 706 Meru branch Vera Beauty and Fashion College a Tivet approved institution Moharata Food Limited manufactures supplies and installs a variety of agri machinery including mudokoi and maize haulers vertical and horizontal mixers maize sheller and grain threshers we also manufacture electric and diesel portion mill small and large silage choppers, cold oil press, hay shredders, roll mill and sifted mill, crusher and many more. For more information call us on 0735-597-509 or 0706-618-847 in Nairobi or 
0485 or 041 223 0332 in Mombasa.